In September 2020, Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev launched a devastating invasion of the internationally unrecognized Armenian Nagorno-Karabakh Republic. Bombs rained on cities and hundreds of thousands were displaced. The war ended in November 2020, with Armenia conceding defeat and Azerbaijan declaring victory. Yet, thousands of young boys died on both sides, and mothers across both nations mourned their sons. Fast forward to 2022, and President Aliyev has been maintaining three steady points. First, that the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict is over and a thing of the past. Second, that Armenians in Karabakh should not fear Azerbaijani rule, assuring their rights will be protected. And third, that he and his nation desire a final peace treaty with Armenia. Okay, sounds promising, but talk is cheap. Lately, temperatures have once again been flaring in Karabakh after a significant lull in tensions. As the international media fixates on the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Aliyev seems to have been emboldened to return to old ways. Several Karabakh villages have been in the headlines in Armenia. Khramort is one. At the end of the 2020 war, Armenia made large land handovers to end the conflict, resulting in villages like Khramort being right on the border. In the past weeks, Azerbaijani forces have been firing at the village, even using mortars and grenade launchers. The same tactics have been employed in villages like Garmir Shuka and Khnushinag. Armenian human rights activists have been decrying the apparent institutional racism and policy of ethnic cleansing of the Aliyev regime. And lo, Azerbaijani forces did something rather Orwellian, bringing in loudspeaker systems to the edge of these villages. and blasting the Islamic Azan call to prayer. Other times there were speeches in perfect Armenian, calling on the villagers to leave their homes or face the use of force. Today even an Armenian farmer's tractor had its windows blasted through by gunfire, and one villager was injured by shrapnel after an Azerbaijani soldier fired a grenade launcher towards the village. And now, another tactic. Nagorno-Karabakh is fully reliant on Armenia for its energy needs. After the military defeat and land handovers, a single gas pipeline runs to the territory, which as a cause of a blast, is now damaged. The Armenian side is attempting to repair the pipeline, but as it runs through an area under the control of Azerbaijan, Baku has decided that this is not a right that Armenians need. Consequently, the entire territory of Nagorno-Karabakh has been without gas. Facing sub-zero temperatures at night, the civilian population remains unable to heat their homes or use warm water. It's worth noting that Azerbaijan too has been disseminating concerning information that the Russian peacekeepers deployed after the war are leaving for Ukraine. This is of course untrue as they arrived on the scene in Khramor today. But still, why push this? Finally, Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan admitted today in a government session that yes, in fact, the situation in Karabakh has become tense once again. And as the Armenian and Azerbaijani foreign ministers travel to the Turkish city of Antalya in a diplomatic first, who knows when Aliyev's reliance on racism to keep power will subside.